House of Representatives insists on probing the $500 billion loan agreement between Nigeria and China for railway projects marked the disapproval of the Minister of Transportation. I'm Linda Akibi and you are welcome to the gavel. The media has been flooded with news about the conditions of a $500 billion loan agreement between Nigeria and China for railway projects, which a federal lawmaker raised an alarm that the conditions were unfavorable. The House of Representatives consequently launched an investigation into the agreement after noting that the federal legislature has been in the dark about the condition of loan agreements with China. Now, during the week, the House Committee on Treaties, Agreements and Protocols began an investigative hearing and invited the Minister of Transportation, Mr. Rotimi Amechi. However, the meeting got off to a rocky start. It was an investigative hearing into Nigeria's loan agreements. Serving ministers and government agencies were invited, including the Minister of Transportation, who at the last hearing pleaded with the committee to halt his investigation so as not to scare the Chinese government away from giving the loan. A disagreement, however, ensued between the Minister of Transportation and the committee chairman on an alleged $33 billion contract. Page 13 under the loan content obligation of the contractor. Article 16.1 stated the contractor shall develop and submit to the employer Ministry of Transport for its approval a local content plan for the training and engagement of Nigerian labor force in all aspects of the contractor works on the project. It contains in that uh, agreement. Can you provide this honorable committee with satisfied copies of labor plan, training programs carried out, and beneficiaries? and evidence of number of Nigerians working in all aspects of this project vis-a-vis -vis their Chinese counterpart as provided in that agreement document. Now, Mr. Chairman, if you say Minister of Transport had a contract of $33 billion, we want to see it. Because as Minister for Transport, the only contract we've awarded so far is $1.6 billion contract for Lagos Ibadan, which is under threat. The, the Can you speak to the questions I asked you now? You see, I told you from the beginning, I have, I have a choice. Will, yes, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. I have, I have, I have, can I, have I please? Can I, I have two choices? Please, please. You gotta please. let me speak. Excuse or me. I stop. Excuse me. This is rules which you obey. From day one, I said when you ask question, we will time you. You answer the question directly. If it is a 1.6 billion dollar contract, which is all we know, because by the time we came, the contract awarded by President Hulu Jonathan, signed by Aganga, had been completed 80 percent. So we did not have to do anything of local content or local, local content. The only one that we have to deal with the issue of local content, which is the only contract that we have for now, is the $1.6 billion contract awarded from Lagos to Ibadan. $1.6 billion, for which Chinese government is providing 1.2, and we are providing the remaining $400 million. Mr. Chairman, there are over, over, over 20,000 workers. Only 560 of them are Chinese. 560, and I wish to submit the document. Can we have the document? Because we need to begin to say the truth to can Nigerians. We, can we have the document? Uh, Mr. We, Chairman, I beg to submit the document. The, nah. Don't worry, I know the, I know the house. I know when to go back. Can you sign this document, please? Please, please. This went on for a while and even extended to the committee when a member tried to make a contribution. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm only trying to guide you. You can't guide me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chairman, we do respect. You do respect. Mr. Chairman, we do Please. respect. I'm your uh, senior in this parliament and I can guide you. Uh, okay. Honor Honorable member, you are co-opted into this committee. You are co-opted into this committee. Okay, thank you, my chairman. I'm coming, yeah. I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm you in have your way, you have please, your... Please, I'm in charge of this committee, Thank please. you, you are, thank you. Yeah, please. I withdraw my question, opinion. Thank you, thank you very much, please. Thank you. How has you adopted? Bring it, I'll adopt it for you. 
Mr. Mitch insisted that investigation of the committee has a political undertone and pointed fingers directly at the chairman. It is good to tell Nigerians the truth. This is very political. Nobody is telling lies. And I will show all the contracts awarded by the PDP government since you want to bring this up. Mr. Chairman, sir. It's important, I tell you, sir, that that contract was signed as a prelude to a loan, and there is no loan. And we may not get the loan because of you, Mr. Chairman, because of the committee you've set up against the China loan. South South. That contract is from Lagos to Calabar, which is the whole of the South-South. Mr. Chairman, we may not get that loan, so there's no contract. I am talking about the same contract you told me of this particular... Which of them? The 2016 contract you talked about? Yes, this one. Which of them? This if you're talking about the South-South, you just ask me. You want, to, you want to meet the South-South contract? Virtually all the contracts. Do you want to meet the South-South contract? This if you want to meet, say you want to meet it, let's go to the other one. Can you listen to me? Follow me. We are not quarreling. Because you're from South South, the, the committee you have set up Don't will push your question. We will lose that contract from Lagos to Calabar. So, please, this issue is not issue of South South; it's issue of Nigeria. And I'm serving Nigeria as a legislator. If we continue to serve our geopolitical zone, the country will not be nice. If Zone A gets their fair share, and next year, have you not approached me on South South? Have you not approached me on South South Rail? Have you not approached me on South South Rail? You have. I have not. Mr. Chairman, you have approached it's me. Okay. Mr. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. My priority as this committee chairman is to make sure any area we are taking rail is viable, and it will promote the economic activities of Nigeria and bring about a multiplier effect. That's my concern, and that's my philosophy, irrespective of any era you push any rate to. I mean Nigerians, and I believe in Nigerian spirit. As the argument continued, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, who appeared visibly upset, mm -hmm. stormed the hearing, prompting a 30-minute break. Sorry, what's going on? Oh, uh, gentlemen, please, can we just take a break for, for about 10, 10 to 15 minutes, please? Let's take a break for 10 to 15 minutes. When the hearing resumed, the initially tense atmosphere was doused and some calm was observed from both the committee chairman yeah, and the minister of transportation as the issue of sovereign immunity is raised. Now, as a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, what can you think about the Federal Ministry of Finance <laughs> that sign and waive the immunity? Of this country. Well, I'm, I'm going to distinguish no, it right. now. I want you to distinguish it clearly. In 2010, Iduo was signed before your co coming. Kaduna Kano was signed in 2010. In 2010. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that clause. Kaduna Abuja. Thank you. That clause was there. Yeah. But it can't be a standard clause because Nigeria have also signed with the Europeans. I have them in my office, and there's no such clause. So when you begin to say it's a standard document, a document that they use in negotiation, I disagree completely. I've shown you some document whereby even the United Nations advised nations not to waive their immunity during negotiation. Why sometimes the National Assembly look at that particular clause is that there's a document also signed and Geneva was the arbitration center, which is a complete neutral ground. Now, most of these documents were signing with China. Hong Kong is already governed by Chinese law. I'm coming. China, of course. Ch 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 no, no, they're not governed. You can see it. You can check those documents that the ministry signed. Anyway, Your own, the one you signed, that is the commercial one, was governed by Nigerian law. They are governed by Nigerian law, sir. I'm coming. The one, the commercial one you signed, governed by Nigerian law with arbitration center at Lagos. I have those documents. They are governed by Nigerian law. Please, can you give me that? And um, the, we, there are centers. You have London, you have Singapore, you have different parts of the world for arbitration. I think if you listen carefully to, and we had a, we had a debate, which included people like uh, Femi Falana, Bolaji Akinyemi, and others, that these are standard uh, clauses, which if you don't add them, you can't have a, you can't have a loan. And I, I'd like to call the attention of the National Assembly to the fact that we have never refused to pay our loans. The committee chairman insists that in signing the loan agreement with the Chinese, 
The Ministry of Finance disobeyed a presidential directive. But the Ministry of Finance insists that every loan agreement is approved by the president. The last has definitely not been heard about this matter. There were also some other interesting hearings in the House of Representatives during the week. Another notable one was a hearing by the House Committee on Implementation of Pay As You Go for cable TV service providers. The House of Representatives Committee on Implementation of Pay As You Go for Cable TV Service Providers has issued a two-week ultimatum to Star Times for a downward review of its tariff. Star Times had on the 1st of August announced an increase in tariff, which it says is because of the foreign exchange rate and increase in value-added tax. Lawmakers, however, insist that the new prices are too high and must be reviewed downward. Whether you did selective um, increments or you, wanted to, you decided to increase on all of them is not the right time. That's the position of Nigerians. It is not the time of COVID-19 that Nigerians should be treated you know, this way. This is the time that you are supposed to provide um, soccer palliative to Nigerians based on the current situation that we are facing. So I would like to ask the management of um, Star Time, led by the CEO here, to have a rethink. Businesses, not just our own business, require palliative to continue to provide services at the same prices that they were providing the service before COVID. If we don't do this, many, many businesses will go down and will have a more serious problem. Most of the satellite from the Europe, they charge, their charge is a benchmark, is a US dollar, not Naira. And the content program, the, the content, when you buy the right, uh, Bundesliga, all the other, and even the entertainment program, they also charge is the US dollar or pound. So all this, we have suffered a lot for the uh, official rate for the currency exchange. Meanwhile, the National Universities Commission has applauded the move by the House of Representatives to establish two tertiary institutions in Delta and Nasarawa states. They are the Federal University of Technology, Asaba, Delta State, sponsored by the minority leader, Representative Ndudi Elumelu, and Federal College of Education, Keanu, Nasarawa State, which was sponsored by Representative Abubakar Hassan. The, only state the director of corporate communications of the NUC, Ibrahim Yakasai, who represented the executive secretary, declared support while making his presentation on the bills at a public hearing organized by the House Committee on Tertiary Education and Services. The NUC boss says the organization would always support the establishment of more tertiary institutions, considering that the annual intake of students across the nation is minimal. The National Universities Commission is always excited when any new institution uh, a university is coming on board because with the 172 universities we have in Nigeria, the, the admission every year does not exceed half a million, 500,000. And we have applicants sometime in, in excess of a million. So we are excited and we support this. Also, Especially the governor of Delta the State, governor, represented by the secretary to the state governor, Tinedu Ebi, applauded the establishment of the University of Technology in Asaba. The establishment of the university will significantly reduce students' admission pressure on the universities of Benin, Port Harcourt, Calabar, Uyo, and the Namjazikwe University, Oka, which are highly sought after institutions for technology and engineering based education within the catchment area. More importantly, it will also boost access to technological education within the area and ease admission frustration amongst youths. The presence of COVID-19 has brought with it the dawn of the reality and importance of technology and why Nigeria as a country needs to urgently invest massively in technological development. As, a failure, as failure to earlier hit to these warnings have led to the loss of highly gifted Nigerians who in their quest to seek the technological knowledge migrated to other countries who have gone on to maximize the benefits of the potentials of our own citizens to our own detriment. You're welcome back to the gavel. 
The Senate Committees on Finance and National Planning have begun a five-day interactive session with heads of revenue-generating federal government agencies. The meetings are intended to examine the 2021 to 2023 medium-term expenditure framework and the role of these agencies in generating revenue to fund the deficit in the budget. Before the National Assembly proceeded on its recess, it received the 2021 to 2023 Median Term Expenditure Framework, MTEF, and Fiscal Strategy Paper, FSP, from President Muhammad Buhari for approval. In the planning document, the federal government proposed the sum of 12.66 trillion naira as aggregate expenditure for 2021 on a deficit of 5.16 trillion naira to be financed by total loan packages of 4.28 trillion naira. The Senate Joint Committees on Finance and National Planning launched a five-day interactive session convening heads of federal government agencies to discuss the MTEF as well as the revenue targets of some of these agencies. The federal budget for this year is the most because this document was put together by the executive and we need all the head of agencies to come and defend what is before us. So any agency that fail to appear with its head or the chief executive should as well know that for this year, 2021, 2023, there is no money. The committee began its conversation with the Comptroller General of the Nigeria Immigration Service to understand its revenue generation performance in the last three years. For 2020, the agency's revenue target is 23 billion, but it could only generate 5.7 billion so far because of COVID-19, a major drop in revenue compared to the 2019 performance of 16.7 billion naira generated by the agency. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we are only now, because the passport offices have been closed, especially uh, uh, in, in, uh, within the period of the COVID-19, we just started opening the passport offices. So we have only generated, as at 30th of June 2020, we only generated in passport 5 billion 714, 760,005. So we hope, since we are opening our passport offices, we hope if yes, we can be able to cough up, at least get more revenue than last year, but without probably take, getting the target. Uh, we have ECOWAS and African Affairs. If I read it, it's a long list, but I'll continue reading it for you. Uh, ECOWAS and African Affairs, these are permits given to ECOWAS citizens. Uh, uh, we, the pro revenue projection was 79 million because they pay very little amount for passport. A resident permit, 384,184. But in 2018, we almost doubled it. We were able to make 126 million, uh, 136,960. This, in, the projection was, uh, in 2019, the projection was 132 million, 4455908, four, but we were able to do less. But committee members were displeased with a contract agreement with a private firm contact on the collection of payment for resident permits. They were concerned at the arbitrary increase in the cost of resident permits for foreigners and its implications for investment. It started at $350 per person. Mm. Am I right, sir? Yes, yes. And then it went up to 700 dollars per person. Am I right? That is an increase of... 50% within a short period. And from $700, it, shot, it jumped to, uh, to $1,000. That is another 30% increase. Then from the $1,000, it jumped automatically to $2,000. That is another 100% increase per person. And there is no fixed rate in Naira. And those people that are being given the residence permits and their money in Naira, most of the companies we pay because there is a fund of paying those people in dollar. So meaning they earn their money in Naira and they pay their, their suffer is being paid in dollar without any fixed rate to the Naira. The meaning is that if a dollar if, uh, if, if dollar today, that is official rate, is our 380 naira. 
And if one needs to renew his or her SAPA residence permit, you have to now do 380 naira times 2,000. I want to believe this company are determining, they are once determining the rate of this payment. I want to believe the government of Nigeria is not part of it because the government has always been soliciting that and, and emphasizing that we should have, um, we should encourage investment and not to discourage investment. From what I've just said, from the, with this short span, you are jumping from 350 to 2000, certainly I want to believe the government of Nigeria is not part of determining this uh, uh, changing, changing in, in the rate. Lawmakers resolved to carry out an exhaustive investigation on the contract agreement between CONTAC and the Nigerian Immigration Service. The discussion on revenue generation was carried over to the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority, NCAA, and the representative of the agency told lawmakers that the agency generated 18.677 billion naira in 2019 but contributed only 3 billion naira to the consolidated revenue account, a situation which raises the eyebrows of committee members. In 2018, we contributed 1.6 billion. In 2019, we contributed 3 billion. In 2020, from January to July, we have contributed 700 billion. I'm uh, sorry, 700 million. 700 billion? Yes, sir. To date? Yes, sir. But can't you do better? Well, uh, with the present situation, uh, you know, that is just what is causing our concern. The staff salary is paid from where? From the IGR, sir. What does staff pay? 1,400. What is your week bill? 555.60. Now, if we expand, you contribute 1 point something billion and expand about 11 billion on, on the current expenditure, which of course is basically consumption. Where we are today, with a budget deficit of about over five trillion, uh, I think that we must optimize every revenue that we need to have. So what he's saying is that unless you justifiably make a good presentation, moving forward, we need to reduce your, your expenditure, expenditure so that we can enhance the revenue in order to finance uh, the, the deficit that we have. The representative of the NCAA was asked to return on Thursday, August 20, with the agency's managing director, as well as the Minister of Aviation, to discuss, among other issues, what over 11 billion naira of the agency's budget for 2019 was expended on. The interactive session continued the following day with the Senate president in attendance. He is concerned about the deficits in the nation's budgets. There's no gain saying that we need a lot more resources because we have more challenges. The Nigeria Customs Service, a critical revenue generating agency, said it has generated 837 billion naira as of July 2020 and hopes to generate a total revenue of 1.465 trillion naira in 2021, as well as 1.704 trillion naira and 1.756 trillion naira in 2022 and 2023, respectively. The customs boss was, however, concerned about some of the agreements Nigeria entered into and its implications for revenue generation. The WTO trade, trade agreement, which is tagged as FTA, that is going to adversely affect the revenue we generate from import. So some of the goods that will be imported into Nigeria will come in at zero duty. Secondly, we have also signed the African Free Trade Area Agreement. That has come into effect, and that will have an adverse effect on revenue we generate from inter-trade within Africa. The committee took the NNPC to task on reports of a missing 48 million barrels of oil and the high cost of production of crude compared to some other oil producing countries. There's nothing like uh, 48 million barrels missing oil. Uh, if you want to corroborate or validate that, 
you have the right to call on DPR. They are the regulator of the industry. That's one. Two, no molecule, no ship leaves the country without clearance from the Navy. So that's another second resource you can verify. Committee members also kicked against the projections by the Federal Inland Revenue Service of 500 billion naira as expected revenue from stamp duties collection in the 2021 budget. They insisted that the figure is grossly underestimated and are calling for a review of the current projection. Now this is where we call it today on this week's edition of The Gavel. If you have any views on any of the issues discussed, please email us on the gavel at channelstv.com. Thank you for staying with us and see you again next week.